want to generate great looking product photos, but don't want to have to hire a designer or learn how to use Photoshop, well, ChatGPT just made it way easier. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you step by step exactly how you can generate these product photos using ChatGPT and some of the best prompts you can use to generate the best results. You can take these photos and put them on your website, your e-commerce store, wherever. So with that being said, let's create some product photos and get right into it. So as we can see here, I'm on ChatGPT and I'm ready to go. A few things to note, the plan that I'm going to be using is the first paid plan, not the $200 plan, but the one just a step under that. So my image generation might be a little bit more than what you would get in your traditional free plan. Secondly, while at this point you would upload your own logo for this, I, in my case, am just going to be simply using ChatGPT to create a custom logo of my own, but the steps going forward are all going to be the same and the prompts and specific tips and tricks that I'm going to provide are all going to be the same. In my case, I'm just creating the logo using ChatGPT, whereas you are going to be uploading it. So I'm just going to say here, make a logo for a coffee company. Just going to do that. I'm not going to be specific about what type of company it is. It's going to say what's the name of the coffee company. And I'm just going to say, call it Josh Coffee Co. Just call it Josh Coffee Co. And it's going to say, what do you want the logo to feel more like? And I'm just going to say, create the logo. Now, we already have other videos on the channel about actually getting realistic looking logo concepts using ChatGPT, but that's not the case for this video. This video is about actually making sure that we can take those logos that we have or are creating using ChatGPT and actually getting realistic looking product photos using ChatGPT. So as we can see here, we have our logo created. It says here, Josh Coffee Co. And I like this logo. The next thing we're going to do here is actually at this point, start to provide some context. So let's say that you've uploaded this image here that says Josh Coffee Co. or whatever your logo actually is. Now we need to determine exactly what type of product photo we want to put it on. Is this going to be used on an e-commerce website? Is this going to be used just on our website as a picture? Say we want somebody, a barista working at the Josh Coffee Co. You know, coffee shop. Is that what we want to do? The context and all the specifics of the photo are going to be the things that make our product and our product photos stand out. Now, somebody who's not a power user of ChatGPT might go ahead and say something like, put this logo on a barista apron in a coffee shop. It's very plain. It's very bland. There isn't a lot of context that's actually provided to ChatGPT to generate a great looking product photo. So we need to actually explicitly state, first of all, that we're creating a product photo. We can say, put this logo on a barista apron in a coffee shop. This is for a product photo for our website. So now we've explicitly stated that that's exactly what we're using it for. So it knows now that when it's using it in its context, it is going to be generating more realistic looking photos. We're next going to say the vibe inside the coffee shop is warm and woodsy. We're trying to generate a product photo after all. It isn't as much as just slapping the logo on a barista or on a coffee cup and calling it a day. No, we want a nice looking product photo. We are going to be replicating something like Starbucks here, but let's make it a little more cabiny. At this point now, I've provided the context for what I actually want. We're putting this logo on a barista apron in a coffee shop, talked about what it's for. In this case, it's a product photo for our website. We've talked about what the vibe inside the coffee shop is, but now what is actually happening in the photo? Well, let's actually provide it that information. And to cap this all off, now I've said the barista is serving two large coffee cups with the logo in the center and medium sized. The apron will be beige with a coffee shop busy, but the barista looking happy, but not too happy. Customers will be waiting in the background, blurred, waiting to receive their orders. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit submit on this and it's going to actually begin generating that image for me. Now, while it's doing that, let me once again break down that prompt so that you can know exactly what I'm doing here to generate better results. Now, again, I could have just said, put this logo on our barista apron in a coffee shop, but that doesn't give AI any sort of idea of what image to actually generate. In this case, I've given it specific context of what we're using it for. The product photo, what kind of vibe it has, woodsy, warm, cozy cabin vibe. I've given it the actual subject of the image, the barista, and what she's doing, serving two large coffee cups with the logo in the center and medium sized, and what sort of little details that AI needs to consider when it's actually generating the image. The apron being beige. Oh, and we've actually got a, a, a man here, a, a male barista. Is there a, a baristo? Is that a word? Maybe, yeah. I think it's just barista across the board. So as we can see here, we've got this very happy looking guy, and let's see if it follows the mark here. We've got the warm and woodsy vibe. And in the background, we will have the customers patiently waiting for their order. And now we're going to see if it's going to actually put that logo onto our product image. So as we can see here, we got the coffee cup. It's looking good so far. And there we go. We have Josh Coffee Co. And look at that. We have our barista with two coffee cups, 
serving the coffee and it's actually made a little adjustment here where it's added this little blur. Now with a few small tweaks, that can be a great product photo for our website. We could say generate another one, but the coffee cups are in to go. So at this point, I have my initial product image, but it might not be exactly what I want here. So I'm not saying go and adjust this image. This is still great to use as a reference, but specifically I'm giving some more information and context that I didn't. For instance, I didn't actually specify that the barista had to be behind the counter and the customers had to be on the other side of that counter, did I? Well, I didn't. So, of course, AI can go and generate the customers in the background. I never explicitly specified that these were going to be in to-go coffee cups, did I? Well, of course, those are the things that I didn't consider, but the AI does consider when it's actually generating the image here. So, I'm going to say generate another one, but the coffee cups are in to-go cups and the barista is behind the counter serving them. So now it's going to use that same context that I just did here and actually refine it a bit further. And this is a great process that you can use when you don't get exactly what you want. Take not the initial image and make the adjustments on it, but take the image as a reference and generate an entirely new image with all of the context that you just gave in the previous prompt, plus the minor adjustments that you want. Overall, you'll be left with more images to work with and provided the AI for reference, and ideally with more aligned images for what you actually want. So in my case, we're gonna see exactly what serves here, and hopefully it's the barista behind the counter with customers in the background serving two to-go coffee cups with the logo on them. Okay, much better. Now, in our case here, we can see that it actually went ahead and changed the logo. Now, this is typically a bug that you would see with ChatGPT if you specifically create the logo in ChatGPT, but if this happens to you, simply re-upload your logo and say, hey, I want you to do that exact image, but with the actual logo, and ideally, you get something great. So now, we have the Josh Coffee Co. We can see here that it's got the actual logo on the barista's apron, and we have those customers in the background. Now, this could be a great product photo to actually put on our website, but let's make a few variations here. Now, let's make one where he's not facing the camera. Maybe I want to create the overall coffee shop vibe. Maybe I'm just selling the apron. It doesn't matter here. How can I take this and actually make more product photos out of it? Well, let's take another variation on this and say that I'm trying to sell home coffee. Take home coffee packaged coffee, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to say generate product packaging for a coffee blend that customers can take home, make it a product photo shoot. And I could just simply say that. Now, again, as I did earlier, I could have provided tons of context about where exactly I want this to be. But for this one, ideally, I just want a kind of white background with the coffee cup bag in it. And specifically what I could do here is do what I did earlier and provide all of the context about what the coffee bag looks like, what the font size is, what the font, like all that information. In my case here, I'm just trying to show you how easy it is to actually generate these product photos using AI and adjust them to match exactly what you're looking for. So we're gonna wait just a moment here and see exactly what kind of image we get for this. As we can see, it's still generating that same sort of cozy cabin vibe and we're actually gonna get that same thing that we just talked about. Now, at this point, this is what I'm talking about. Look at this, Josh Coffee Co. Cabin Blend Medium Roast, net weight 12 ounces, 340 grams, with the logo on it. If it didn't match the exact specifications of my logo, all I would have to do is go over to the select tool, so, you know, select the coffee cup part of my logo, and say, you know, make it look like my actual logo, but I'm not gonna do that in this case. And there we have a great looking product photo. Now, we could take this same image and say, you know, adjust it. So it is 15 degrees to the right. And I could say that here. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the context of this image, the cabin blend, medium roast. That looks like something that I would buy. It looks very simple. Packaging looks very nice. And you could imagine this being sold in that grocery store. And we have an error here. Okay, very interesting. Uh, obviously, it doesn't understand what 15 degrees to the right is, so we're just gonna go back into it. And I'm gonna say, adjust it so it faces slightly to the right more. So I'll say, adjust it so it faces slightly to the right more. And now it's gonna take that same image that it's using as reference with the cabin blend, and it's gonna generate an image where the actual bag is facing slightly to the right more. And this is a great way if you are having this on Shopify, for example, to have multiple product photos where it's the same photo, but just facing a slightly different way. Maybe you wanna show the back, et cetera. And maybe if you don't even have real product packaging yet, this would be a great way to actually 
prototype things. If you are thinking about starting a coffee brand or thinking about selling t-shirts, this is a great way to actually prototype it without just using the you know copy and paste that other logo companies do where they're just trying to make you know your mock-ups look semi-realistic but you know it doesn't always look exactly right. This is a new alternative to that. So as we can see here, if I say adjust it so it faces slightly to the right more, what it's doing is it's taking this image as a reference, which is facing directly towards us. And now it's actually making it face slightly to the right. And we can do this over and over again until we have tons of different options. Now you don't need transparent backgrounds, but these typically work best for the logos that you're going to be using here. And we cannot just stop with this because the next step we could do is take this image and say, make it holiday themed. The prompts don't have to be uber specific. You just have to know exactly what type of prompts to actually put in. Doing different variations depending on what you're selling, different setting changes. Think of you as a photographer. You're not somebody who's simply prompting an AI anymore. You're a photographer. If you close your eyes, what sort of setting do you want to have for this product photo? What sort of subject do you want to have? What is the time of day? These are all considerations that photographers must have. What are the shadows going to look like? What's the lighting going to be? Where are the light sources coming from? These are all things to consider when you're actually taking photos in real life. And these are the same things that you have to consider and specifically tell AI when you're prompting it to create some amazing looking product photos here. So already at this point, we have multiple ways to actually generate realistic looking product photos for our products, whether they exist or not. But now taking it a step further, saying make it holiday themed here. We can see that the major adjustment is that now in the background of the Josh Coffee Co. cabin blend, we now have what appears to be a Christmas tree with tons of different Christmas lights. We have not only the orange light here, but the red light. And that wasn't present in the original image. Now this looks like something that could be sold. And as we can see here, it's the exact same thing. But look at that. We got some mistletoe and a pine cone and it's the exact same image, but now we have a holiday blend. And it's that simple. The process of prompting here isn't really that difficult, but it's just about making sure that you think like a photographer and not just as an AI prompter. You need to be somebody who is placing yourself in the position of someone behind the camera. What are they thinking? The shadows here are something to consider. What's the actual subject? All of those things that I've talked about previously to get great looking product photos like this. And now we have virtually the same photo but a variation for the normal one and the actual holiday one, which I think looks great. And at this point, you're good to go. To recap quickly, what are the things that we need to do? Well, above all else, you have to make yourself a photographer, not just someone who's prompting an AI, but actually someone who's thinking about what sort of photos they want to create. The setting, the time of day, who's the subject, all these things are things that photographers consider. So feel free, look up a few things about photography and what specific things do photographers look for when they're creating images and take those same pieces of information relative to your specific product or service and tell it to the AI because as much information that you can give to the AI will guarantee that you get great results. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see what kind of product photos you create. My name is Josh Mountain and I'll see you in the next one.